Hello all, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in, in today's video, we will be going through this hub and spoke uh, architecture where the OCA firewall is deployed in the hub um, and the spoke will be con the VCNB and VCNC uh, will be considered uh, the spoke that contains the spoke workloads and uh, the customer data center uh, which is connecting to the OCI over uh, fast connect or even IPsec uh, will be considered another spoke. So we will be using uh, this OCI firewall to inspect traffic for on all four directions uh, and uh, let's see how we can use this DRG um, create new routing tables so that it can inspect traffic from north south and as well as uh, east west that is traffic coming from the internet uh, to uh, going out to the internet and also traffic in between the VCNs and the on-prem data center. So if you see um, VCN A with 172.16.0.0 slash 24 CIDR that is considered as hub in this um, scenario. VCN B and VCN C with 172.16.1.0 slash 24 and 2.0 slash 24 are considered spoke workloads and the on-prem data center CIDR range is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. And uh, you should see three routing tables. Uh, one is for the on-prem network, which is for the VC, uh, VC attachment. So when, when Fast Connect gets terminated on your DRG, you will create a virtual circuit of that uh, connection and that attachment will be pointed to routing table number one and uh, routing table number two is meant for all the internal VCNs. So the difference between uh, the on-prem uh, routing table and the VCN uh, spoke routing table internal to the OCI is the on-prem data center would come to <coughs> the Oracle Cloud network only for uh, accessing uh, OCI resources wherein VCNB and VCNC will be connecting to the internet also to the internet using the same uh, connectivity and that's why you have two different route tables for on-prem and for the spoke uh, VCNs if you, you will see two, two different spokes here right VCNB and VCNC but you would see both of uh, those attachments using the same DRG routing table. And there's a third routing table that is meant for the hub uh, attachment. That attachment will learn all the routes. So he will be the only guy that will know routes to all these attachments. Whereas we essentially are hiding uh, the route of uh, the spoke VCNs from the uh, on-prem data center. And even the spoke VCNs themselves, they, they will not be able to talk to each other directly they all they have to do is route the traffic to the uh, hub vcn firewall let's see how that gets done um, in this video so let's let's go through the flows first let's understand how this flow and the uh, routing table touch points that we have to configure to make this work in drg uh, using drg version 2 so the very first flow is going to be the ingress internet access to a server in uh, vcnb so the traffic that gets, let's assume that you're uh, deploying a workload in VCNB, um, a server which is internet facing and uh, that is put behind a public load balancer which is deployed in your hub VCN's public subnet. Then the traffic would be forwarded to the, so uh, if somebody, a user is trying to access that application, uh, the, the app traffic will get uh, down, forwarded to your internet gateway your internet gateway would subsequently forward the traffic to the load balancer, public load balancer, which bears its public IP address. And the load balancer will have the backends of uh, 172.16.1.0 as their backends. So it will try to forward that traffic uh, to the backend. But then uh, it would be using the public subnet routing table associated to, the route, uh, to its subnet. And that routing table will have an entry of those destination CIDR pointing to your uh, the firewall OCA firewall. Now this firewall will inspect the traffic, will pass through its law uh, rules, and if it I'll, if it is okay for that traffic to be allowed, then it will use its route table associated to the private subnet, and it would forward the traffic to the DRG. So now the DRG, as I mentioned earlier, would you use its routing table number three 
and the tree would know where the destination is and then he will forward the traffic to that using its attachment um, to the VCN attachment and send the traffic to the destination uh, VCN and subsequently the, the destination server would receive the traffic and he will try to respond. Now let's see how the reverse traffic goes through. Um, the reverse traffic when uh, for the reverse traffic to get initiated it would use the routing table associated to the subnet uh, in that spoke VCN and this uh, being a spoke VCN it's essentially going to have only one route which is point all the traffic to the 0.0.0, .0 will be pointed to the DRG and the DRG will have route table number 2 uh, and it would use route table number 2 to forward the traffic to the hub VCN attachment. So he was going to forward all this traffic to the hub VCN attachment. Now the hub VCN attachment has a route table associated to its attachment and we call it transit route table. So there is a route table that you will create called the transit DRG route table which will it which which will be used to forward all the traffic to its firewall so there will be a route pointing uh, all this traffic to the firewall and firewall will again inspect this traffic OCA fire, network firewall being an a stateful firewall um, it would uh, and this being an existing session it will forward the traffic to uh, to the load balancer using its routing table its default routing table and as I mentioned before, the reason being the, tra the traffic is getting routed back to the load balancer is because the load balancer is proxying this traffic. So the source IP address is now the load balancer's IP address. So the traffic gets routed to the load balancer and the load balancer uses its routing table and sends the traffic to the internet gateway. And the internet gateway sends the response back to out to the internet. So the connection gets established successfully. So this is how an ingress internet access works in this uh, topology and in, let's see how the egress internet access works um, let's see what the difference is going to be the, the the first half of the flow would pretty much be the same the vcn b will use its vcn attachment uh, routing table um, uh, the vcn subnet routing table and then forward the traffic to the drg trg will use its uh, sub route table that was meant for spoke vcns and it would forward the traffic to the hub vcn attachment and transit DRG routing table will forward any traffic coming from the spoke VCN or any attachments to the to the firewall first. Firewall will use its routing table and send the traffic to the NAT gateway. Now, what is the difference between this and the previous flow is here the source is your 172.16.1.1 network and the destination could be anything outside in the internet. Let's assume it's 1.1.1. So what the fire, uh, firewall will do is the firewall's private subnet routing table will have a default route pointed to the NAT gateway and for unknown networks it would forward the traffic to the NAT gateway and the NAT gateway will forward the traffic out to the internet using its public IP address. Now let's see understand what happens in the reverse flow. In the reverse the internet would obviously respond to the NAT gateways uh, because it is using its public IP address and sending the traffic out to the internet right. So the internet would send the traffic back to the NAT gateway. Now I'm sure you will know already know that NAT gateway will know its 172.16 um, its VCN address range already. You don't have to kind of write a route table for it to know what is 172.16 slash 24 which is its own VCN CIDR range but then this NAT gateway is now trying to route traffic out to the internet for a for a CIDR range which is not in its VCN it is VCN B so we will have to teach NAT gateway where to route this traffic the response traffic to so we create a route table called NAT, NAT transit NAT routing table and uh, we will point that 172.16.1.0 uh, or 2.0 networks um, CIDR ranges back to the firewall so tra NAT tra NAT transit NAT routing table would forward the traffic to the firewall inside the OCI that's in the private subnet and uh, obviously the private subnet will use its routing table forward the traffic to route table number DRG route table number 3 DRG route table number 3 will forward the traffic to the destination uh, um, using its attachment and the reverse uh, and that's how the reverse traffic flows so the reverse traffic gets routed to the, the VCN B uh, workload 
now let's the last flow is the east west flow um, the uh, how the traffic gets routed from the customer on premise data center to the uh, workloads so the traffic gets initiated from the customer on prem data center network equipment and it, it gets routed through that to the virtual circuit or through the ipsec attachment and these attachments will have a different routing table let's call it routing table number 1 and that routing table will forward uh, the traffic to the hub vcn hub vcn will use its transit drg route table and forward the traffic to the firewall firewall will inspect the traffic use its routing table send the traffic back to the drg number 3 route table number 3 drg route table number 3 will forward the traffic to the vcn um, b which is the destination attachment uh, vcn uh, network and the, re res the response traffic will be uh, following a symmetrical path it would send the traffic back to the DRG and it would use its routing table number two and forward the traffic to the hub VCN attachment. The transit DRG route table is again used to forward the traffic further to the firewall. Firewall, this being an existing session, use allows the traffic. The route table is route the private subnet routing table of the firewall is forwarding the traffic to the DRG. DRG sends the traffic back to the on-prem uh, data center network. So I hope uh, we are now clear with the flow and uh, the routing touch points that we need to configure to make uh, this work, to make sure that the a single firewall instance can be used to inspect um, all four direction traffic. This is a very common question that, that I get asked and that's why I'm making this video. Hopefully it would help um, people that, that are trying to accomplish this uh, specific scenario. And uh, go through the go through by reminding of the blog. Uh, you will also see the configuration snapshots of this uh, CID range and how I how you can create uh, these three different DRG routing tables and the route table entries in uh, the hub VCN and the spoke VCN. Uh, that I will be sharing a screenshot of those configuration as well um, in the remainder of my blog. Please go uh, read it and I'll be happy if it helps. Thank you.